Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Peter Chats. So let's talk about New York City. I grew up in Queens, I went to Philadelphia for college, and then I lived in Manhattan and worked in Manhattan for 13 years. I left recently to the suburbs. I've always had a love and hate relationship with New York City. Wearing a suit, waiting for the train station in the summer, hate. Getting out of the train station and feeling the energy of the city all around you, love. Waiting an hour online to eat ramen, hate, and then love. As I eat it. Here are some things that living in New York City taught me. COVID be damned. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want me to discuss any topics, please leave a comment. Thanks a lot, guys. You need less than you think of everything. You have less space naturally, but you also realize that you actually need less than you would think. There are questions that you never even think about. Like, what can become a chair? Because when you have people over, you just need to find places for them to sit. And no matter what it is, if it can fit a butt, that's a chair. Everything you have needs to serve multiple purposes. Your bed is also your couch. Your dining table is also your desk. At one point, my IKEA bookshelf was my dresser. Well, that was a really strange and intense period of my life, but you kind of get the idea. Your closet and storage space will be tiny, maybe two feet wide of space on average per person, per apartment. My clothing over time, by necessity, had to become simpler because I can't wear a bright color shirt every week. Over time, my clothes were shades of white, blue, and olive. You learn to edit your stuff, or all your stuff will collapse on you in your apartment. You realize that you need to eat less than you think. After meeting my wife, she made me realize I could eat even less than that. You have more energy than you think you do, even though there's so much standing and so much walking. You walk to the train station, you wait on the train tracks, you stand in the train, you ride the train, you get out of the train, you walk upstairs, and then you walk to work. That's a lot of walking. Basic chores require more effort. If you're lucky, your laundry is in your building. If you're really lucky, your laundry is in your unit. But for a lot of people, their laundry is across the street or around the corner. If you want to get groceries, you usually have to take the train or a bus to get to the grocery store. I remember one day getting groceries. I had my baby strapped in front of me in a carrier. I walked outside my home, took the train to Trader Joe's, and then I came back with groceries in my school bag on my back and groceries in both hands with the baby in front. And that's just kind of a normal day for getting groceries. Now my mother-in-law thought we were crazy for living this way, but we just got used to it. You can sleep through anything. There's a lot of noise, there's a lot of light. I remember growing up in Queens, we lived in a first floor apartment. There would be sounds outside our door all the time. There would be fire truck sounds, police sounds, ambulances, random honks, car alarms going off, just people outside yelling and screaming. In Brooklyn, I lived across the street from a women's shelter. One day, early morning, we heard a guy screaming a woman's name outside. He was probably screaming to someone who was living in the shelter. And this went on for several days. All this kind of stuff is just normal course. You know what, you just learn to sleep through it. Appreciate nature more than you think. Any patch of grass becomes holy ground, like the patch of grass underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. I know it's a cliche, but it's really true. Central Park and Prospect Park are really your backyard. You're more patient than you think you are. Now, pre-COVID, imagine riding a train, a cramped train, with your face right next to someone's armpit because he has his arms up, grabbing onto the handle so he doesn't slam into you if the train suddenly stops. Now imagine this multiplied by millions of people taking the train every day. I was really surprised that not more fights broke out in the train. It made me realize how patient and understanding people were. You learn to accept everyone. There are over 200 nationalities in New York City. There's probably more hairstyles and more fashion styles than you can imagine. You just kind of shrug off what you may think is weird. And you realize everyone is just being themselves. Say la vie. So did New York City make me a better person? It's reminded me to be thankful for the little things in life, like being able to actually drive your groceries home, having laundry in your house. And most importantly, it's made me realize that I'm a lot more resilient than I would have thought. I'm very thankful for my time in New York City. And I would recommend, if your circumstances align, you spend some time there, even if it's a brief while. Take care, bye-bye.